What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Chase on two wheels here. And today on the Wreck Bike Rebuild Garage Show, Brian and I are going to remove that piece of shit engine that is in our CBR 1000 Street Fighter build. Don't call it a piece of shit. The engine's a piece of shit. It's the knocky knocky. What was it? The knocky knocky what? Oh, Brian, do you mean the ticky ticky knock knock? There you go. Uh, so, guys, the goal of today's episode. <laughs> The goal of today's episode is to get the engine removed, and if you guys didn't see the last episode, we took the oil filter out, bone, muck, and dry. So, we're all curious what the hell is up with that. We're going to show you guys a cool tool that you have to have to get this engine out. The literally, the engine wouldn't still be in there if we didn't have to order the tool. We'll show you guys that in a minute, but... This is Wrecked by Creeble Garage, so you guys know we give these motorcycles away. So if you want to get episodes a week ahead of time and potentially win our finished builds, you can sign up at the top link down below. But without wasting any more time, let's show you guys the tool. And away we go. And away we go. Good afternoon, everybody in YouTube land. So this is our uh, fancy fandangle that looks like made in China tool, although this is a Japanese motorcycle. Um, this is what we refer to as a spanner socket. Now, I know anybody that's in Europe right now is be like, what the hell did you just say? Because spanners are wrenches there. But here in the United States, this is a spanner socket. So this one is two-sided. So it fits two different size spanner lock rings and what I mean by a spanner lock ring if we go ahead and point right down in this hole right here right so there you can see there is a uh, ring in behind this piece of hardware with four little notches taken out of it and this cool little tool goes in and fits right into that ring without loosening that ring that's in there you can take all the motor mount bolts out you want and the engine's not going anywhere it's not going to fall out so we needed this one at the proper length here to be able to fit into the well here and lock in place and not scratch anything else on the way. So we had to uh, order this tool up to make sure that we can get this motor out and uh, not fight with it too hard. So this is what we needed. It's now here, time to take out the engine. So we have our tool now. So now, first step is we gotta get this engine out so we can figure out. Why the oil filter was dry? I'm still like, I mean, if you could take your finger and stick it inside the oil filter and it comes out gray and dry, you know that there's never been oil inside of this thing. Yup. And uh, we ran this bike that you guys remember. It's So where I would like to start is I wanna take off some of the little bitty stuff, like the bracketry for the clutch cable, this little bracket up front that holds the bottom of the radiator in place. Right. Uh, and then start loosening all of our motor mounts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can get into disconnecting the rest of the wiring harness and removing the motor mount bolt. So cool. let's start with an eight and a 10 millimeter socket. Got it. So uh, we got the clutch cable off, we got the bracket off for the radiator. Now I'm gonna remove the shift lever and linkage. And, uh, after we do that, then we'll remove the throttle bodies and start taking off all the electronics. Okay, so on the right side of the machine, you can get to the clamp for the throttle body. On the left side of the machine, there's actually a hole. Oh. Okay. And then you go straight through the hole to get to the clamp. If that hole wasn't there, you'd have an extremely tough time removing these throttle bodies. All right, 
So uh, before I pull the throttle body off, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the injectors. Brian, what is primary air versus secondary air? So, or is there uh, a primary air? If you want to, the secondary air is part of your emission system where it oh, that's the fresh recycling. air into the, yes. Okay. So that's what these hoses and valve are. They connect to these exhaust ports uh, on the top of the valve cover. That goes down with a little tiny pipe and there's a little flapper valve in there and everything goes down. There's a little super tiny air jet that uh, allows for fresh air to be fed directly into the exhaust system to, to burn off any un, unburned fuel that's coming out of the cylinders into the exhaust system. This is the cam position sensor. So undo that as well. Man, that's in a bad spot. That's what I mean, like this is bolted in place, it can't turn. And then the release for this spark plug boot is underneath it. Right. So it's like little things like that that Honda does that drives me insane. Like, thing on it. All this room that you would have to make to take all this stuff out to get in here and remove the valve cover to inspect the valves. Right. You know, or even just to get in here and replace spark plugs. So you have to get to the point where you could take all that stuff that we just removed to get the rubber thing off so you can get to the spark plugs. Wow. So you don't have to take the radiator off. Right. But you have to do the air box, the throttle body, the throttle cables, the secondary air system. All this wiring harness has to be moved out of the way to replace the spark plugs. This is one of the reasons why I don't particularly like Honda. Fantastic riding machine. Right. You know, they do everything very, very well, but when it's time to do maintenance on them, they're just, it's a, it's a battle. Yeah. You know, it's a battle. This is a knock sensor. I bet that thing was going off a lot because it knocks a lot. A knock sensor is more for uh, ignition timing than it is for broken parts of the engine. So if your engine starts to uh, to detonate or ping or knock detonate um, under throttle, like it's a it's a running issue type of. If your engine is detonating or um, or knocking or pinging. Uh, you could do damage to the pistons themselves. And so that sensor is uh, literally bolted into the side of the cylinders. And if any of the cylinders are pre-detonating or, or knocking, um, it will pick up the vibration from that. Pinging is uh, just another name for uh, pre-detonation. Some people know it as knocking or pinging, and really what's happening is either the engine is too hot or something is going wrong internally. Maybe it's not getting enough fuel, but the, the fuel and air in the cylinder is lighting before the spark plug lights it. So between the heat and the pressure and the amount of fuel, if those things are incorrect, it is possible for the pressure and the heat of the engine to burn the fuel off before the spark plug actually fires it. So if that happens as the piston is coming up and it fires before it gets to the point where it should be ignited, it's putting a lot of pressure on the piston before it actually should. So one, you lose horsepower. Two, it puts a lot of wear and stress on the crown of the piston or the face of the piston, as well as the connecting rods, all the bearings. It can do some internal damage if your bike is not running correctly and it starts to, to ping or knock. So the other thing with that is it creates a lot of heat because you technically you have a very lean situation going on in the cylinder. 
and it gets so hot that it'll literally melt the top of the piston and it'll melt a hole in it. Which is not something that happens too often in a four stroke engine, but old school two stroke stuff, if you, for some reason you wound up with like an air leak somewhere in the motor, it would lean the motor out and it would just melt a hole in the top of the piston before you even knew what happened. Very important to keep an eye on that kind of stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? Which is why there's a sensor in it and that sensor is attached to the ECU and checking <laughs> so the when light you get engine yada, codes. Yada. Yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff that's attached to it. So uh, we'll just go ahead and disconnect these last couple of connectors in here. So right down here is the chassis ground, which is why there's more than one ground on this machine. There's one on the chassis, and then there's another one down here on the engine itself. You see that little piece of plastic is broken off. So this wire used to be here on that, and this little rubber boot was holding that little piece of plastic on. So it was cracked off in there, not a huge deal. We're, we're good, it's nothing to be too concerned about. All right, I think we're ready to pull the motor mounts and yank the engine out. All right, cool. Yeah. Just finished disconnecting all the freaking cabling. You wanna make sure everything is disconnected because the motor is obviously a heavy unit. You don't wanna be dropping that out when, and then, then discover something's connected. So your wires are attached, you drop your engine out and it just rips the connector off. Oh, good God. So if you guys are doing this, make sure you are meticulous. Me and Brian have both like looked over this thing multiple times. And if you're not, when you're lowering the engine, do it very, very slowly and check it as it's coming down to see if anything is still attached to it. Right, because if you pulled one of these, and it just... In most cases, you're buying a harness. All right guys, so next up, we're gonna be removing the engine mount bolts and then get a lift underneath the bike and start getting the engine out. So we got our two front motor mounts out, left and right. Those are in the frame sliders. Those are the frame slider bolts that are also the uh, engine mount bolts. Right. So when you put your frame sliders in, you actually replace an engine mount. Um, one of the strongest parts of the assembly is where the frame bolts to the engine and where the bolts that go through the frame bolt onto the engine, bolt sides that are very sturdy. So that's why they put your frame sliders there so they, they can take an impact. They're always hefty boys too. And uh, you know, it's a big heavy bolt and it's in a lot of heavy material so uh, it should survive an impact. Now we're gonna go ahead and loosen the upper and lower rear engine mounts. So now we get to use our specialty tool. Uh, this not is quite the... yet. So there's a nut here, nut there. Oh, and once okay. those are off, then we can go ahead and use a specialty tool to uh, to get what we need. I thought we were gonna have to use a specialty tool to hold this from moving. So that's a regular it. tool on that side. It's got an Allen bit in the center, mm -hmm. and then that lock ring goes around it, and it slides a spacer back and forth, which is right there. That's what it does, is it drives that spacer that's threaded. Gotcha, okay. Okay, cool. Yep. So let's go ahead, it looks like a 17 and a 19. So we have the, uh, the nuts taken off of the bolts on this side. So now you can actually put in the specialty tool and loosen that spacer. Yeah. 
the thing so, the tool goes into. Here is our spanner lock nut, so you can get a better look at it. The tool fits just like that. All right, so you can crack this loose. This is the lock, so you can back that out and give you the space that you need. Lower motor mount bolt is already out. So right now, the only thing that's holding this thing in here is the upper motor mount bolt and the jack. So you just need to push that. Right. It's gonna have a lot of pressure on it. It may not have any. So Chase has just loosened all the bolts holding our oil pan on. Uh, right in this deep spot in the oil pan is where the pickup should actually be. It's really, really, that's why they're shaped like this, so they can put the, the pickup really deep into the oil that's in the, the engine. That was awesome, wasn't expecting it to come off that easy. Oh, okay, well there's no, uh, there's no gasket in it, that's why. So the mating surfaces are machined, so they, they fit pretty much perfectly together mm -hmm. and they just put a light bead of gasket sealer around it to make sure that nothing works its way through. And it looks pretty clean in here. What are you looking for when you say it so, looks clean? Uh, if you could see, there is a screen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the bobber was filled with clutch material. Right, I do. So it was <laughs> like much pretty too. much blocked off. So this one on both sides, you could see that Okay. screen is pretty clear. Can um, you see anything else from here that would kind of give us any or sort of idea well, for the next This episode? is the oil pump. So we could actually pull the oil pump out. So while we're here, let's go ahead and knock this pipe off, pull it off and take a look at it. And then one, two, three bolts and an oil pump will pull out. Okay. So we've got our oil pan off. We've removed our oil pickup and I really don't see anything that would clog the pickup and, and stop our feed to the oil filter. We've uh, removed this oil feed pipe. It goes between the oil pump and the case here, which is pretty much right where the oil filter housing is. It's right in this path. And uh, right now I am removing the hardware. Can you take the dipstick out? Yep. Removing the one bolt that holds the oil pump gear on so we can get the oil pump out of here and take a look at the oil pump real quick. This is gonna give us a better idea of what, what we're looking at for I the mean, next episode. I mean, hopefully if uh, we find something here, 
that kind of will, uh, you know, give us something a little bit more, a little bit more direction. If not, then we're just going to tear this thing apart and uh, chalk up our, our dry filter to it being filled with air and not being able to get oil through it because it was under pressure. And <laughs> we're not going to know that until... Until we get the whole thing back together and fire it up. the chain fall in here because we know we're going to take this engine apart. If I wasn't, I would hook a little wire to that chain and tie it off so it doesn't drop. For now, we know this thing's coming apart, so there it oh goes. God, that, okay. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> does not feel good. What does that mean? There's a little bit of a tight spot in it. This little tab fits into that tab right there. Right. Okay, this is the shaft for the water pump. Okay. So this gets bolted inside the case. Right. The pickup goes on it. The gear goes on it. The chain goes from the gear to a gear on the back of the clutch. So as the engine spins and spins that shaft, it spins the oil pump, which also spins the water pump, and everything gets driven together. It's moving oil. Just to leave the oil pump as is. So we'll, uh, we'll let it drain. Right. And then uh, we'll split the pump next time. I really don't think that this is going to be the be all end all issue. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're still obviously going to have to take the rest of this engine apart to see if we can't figure out where all the knocking noises were coming from. There's got to be a part in there that is shiny now from getting beat up. So you're saying in here or in here? Most likely in both of these places we're going to find some, some damage on it. it. Like I said, when I'm turning this by hand, you can almost feel like a little bit of a tight spot. Right. Which means that there could have been a piece of metal that went through the pump at one point in time and put like a dent in it. And every time that dent comes around to the tight spot in the pump, it makes, you know, where the pump gets really close together, where the clearances are real small. And if there's a little dent in it, it's going to rub. Mm -hmm. And it'll cause that little bit of a tight feeling. Um, we'll wait and see, I guess. Yep. Um, okay, Maybe so... there was a lot of info in this one. Wait until the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so before we start digging too deep into this... Uh, we're just going to wait for the next episode. We'll tear the oil pump open, and then I assume we'll just start diving in deep into this engine. We're just going to tear it apart. The whole thing's got to come apart. Yep. So, so uh, get ready for some engine knowledge uh, on the next cool episode. The part of having this off like this is if we take the water pump off, we can take the whole motor and flip it upside down. It's got a flat spot to sit on when we take it apart. That's a good point. Uh, so, guys, hopefully you guys are uh, excited for some in-depth engine knowledge and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of Rec Bike Rebuild Garage. It'll be day five of the CBR 1000 Street Fighter build. Uh, thank you guys for getting to the end of the video and please pray that this is not too terrible on the inside. <laughs> we'll see well, it's you definitely not going to be the 300. <laughs> hey, we got a it's really... definitely we, not going to be the flat tracker. We got a low barrier for entry. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next one. Outro crew. Uh... Oh my god, I have to stand up. Sorry, I was our crew. My old man knees. Um, outro crew, you guys want to put bets on what you think is all messed up inside of here? Go ahead and turn that. Turn it like three or four full rotations and tell me if you feel where it gets tight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Feel that little tight spot? Uh huh. That thing should just turn absolutely perfectly buttery smooth. Well, it seems like it's the oil pump. Well, we're definitely going to have... Uh, Maybe that's just a symptom. Yeah, very well could just be the symptom from right? the problem. Maybe all this bullshit in there caused that to do that.
Yeah, maybe whatever is making the knock has knocked a piece of metal off that found its way into the oil pump. Right. You know, so... 